PT Pop here. All four loads of my brain securely bound behind my back. Today I'm going to talk to you about the things I miss about Arizona. And there are some things I miss. Not a lot, but there's a few things. Things I miss about Arizona. I never thought I'd say this. And it's not like how I was in Arizona and I miss things about Ohio. It's a little different. It's a lot different. But the first thing I miss about Arizona are the mountains. I love the mountains. I like looking at them. Of course, there's not a lot you can do with a mountain. You know, you can't, you can climb it if you're motivated to. I wasn't motivated to climb the mountains. Especially when you go up in the mountains, you got to wrestle with rattlesnakes and mountain lions and stuff out there, which I really wasn't that keen on. So I miss the mountains. They're beautiful to look at. And, uh, it's just nice to see them to wake up in the morning and go, ah, look at the mountains. Another thing I miss out there, I don't miss the sunshine. I, I really hate sunshine now more than ever uh, because of living out there. I'm really, I'm like totally a head case when it comes to sunshine and heat. I can't stand it now. But when it comes to the women out there, my God, the women in Arizona and Southern California, they're just amazing. They're gorgeous, beautiful, just beautiful women out there. Um, and when I compare them to the women in Ohio, there's just no comparison. There, there's some attractive ladies here, but you know, you have to really like your women with a few, a little, a little meat on their bones if you want to find a woman attractive here. And you have to like women that smoke cigarettes and chug beer like. They live for it, you know. Hey, buddy. You know, if you go into a restaurant here, the nice-looking waitress talks like this. Hey, buddy, you want the you want the Reuben or the hamburger? I got I got a cigarette break to go on. You know what I mean? So the the women out west are just absolutely dropped in gorgeous. Another thing I miss um, are jobs. Arizona had tons of jobs. As far as I'm concerned, I'm concerned there's no jobs here. They discriminate here, age discrimination here. It's, it's really weird here. Very strange place to live. So there's, there's not a lot of work here. Um, unless I want to work at, at Home Depot or Walmart or something like that. I'm not going to do that. Um, Arizona, you could find a job. I could move out to Arizona right now and find a job. Like, and, and I'd have a job like within a month. Easy. It's that easy to find a job out there. Everybody's hiring. There's there's new companies all the time. There's massive companies, big headquarters. So there just aren't the jobs here. Another thing I miss about Arizona is the music scene. I bitched about it when I lived there. But honestly, I don't know if it's the music scene or just the musicians. The musicians out there or more welcoming um, and not as clickish. It's like everybody out there I had, I, I met at least two people that I could talk to and be friendly with and they, they were real real friendly guys, um, at least two. I mean, uh, I don't wanna say two, one, two, there's Raul and there's Bob and there's Joe. Um, there was Jennifer. I mean, there's all kinds of people out there that are willing to play, get together, jam, go go out and get gigs. I met them all over the place. Out here, it's like, it's really strange here too, musically. It's like, for some reason, people here musically, I don't know, they're, they're very cliquish or I don't know what they are. So a lot of them aren't really all that talented. But here, they're all wrapped up in themselves. They, they kind of act like, their shit don't stink, like like the, the next Eric Clapton or something, and they can barely play a box chord. It's really weird here. And the people out here that have made it absolutely won't, won't speak to Like when I say made it, <clears throat> I don't mean like big time. I mean like locally. They get hired all over the place. <clears throat> they act like their shit don't stink. But out there, I've known people that would blow people out of the water here, just knock them like a nuclear blast out of the water musically. And they're, you know, they're just cool. But one of them was from Columbus. This guy named Bill, he was from Columbus, Bill Dutcher. He was a, he's an awesome musician. Yeah, I've been to his house, met his wife, 
all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> but out here, you meet guys like that, like, oh, uh, pardon me, you, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I have uh, to go polish my butthole. I, uh, I can't speak to you right now, thank you. I've got to go polish my guitar strings, yes. So it's, um, it's an odd world here. Another thing I miss about Arizona are the roads. <clears throat> Very sincerely, the roads here in Ohio are horrible. <clears throat> and honestly, we had forgotten how bad they are. But many of the neighborhoods here, and it doesn't matter if you're in a rich section of the city or poor section, Cleveland roads are like Berlin in 1945. I mean, it's just freaking crater filled. Just craters everywhere. Just crazy craters. You could lose a couple of fillings in a hubcap driving around here. The roads out in Arizona, well thought out, planned. There's no craters because there's no weather. You know, it's just sunshine. They have the uh, most awesome thing in Arizona, and that's rubberized asphalt. <clears throat> rubberized asphalt. Asphalt, I guess, with a like, melted rubber in it or something. And this stuff is just great. It's really great. I mean, this rubberized asphalt is quiet. It's smooth. You don't even think, know you're on the road. You're doing 75 miles an hour down like the the 202 in Phoenix <clears throat> and you have no idea your wheels are turning it's so quiet really amazing stuff and um, so what have I covered roads women music jobs and I think as far as the roads go again is the way the city's laid out it's a modern city it's a modern city and I I didn't realize I was a snob but after living in a modern city where where somebody thought it out, you know, it was built and structured beyond in like 1780 or whatever, whenever Cleveland was established. Cleveland's been around since like 1786 or something like that. I don't know. It's, it's an old city. I don't know how old it is. <clears throat> so somebody sat down and said, hey, how can we make a city? and map it out so it makes sense. And that's what they did. They made a city that makes sense. They, the roads here are all laid out in a grid. Not here, I'm sorry. The roads in Arizona and Phoenix are laid out in a grid. So I'm driving backwards into a parking space and I can't concentrate. My brain's from Ohio. There we go, I hit the curb. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> but there's, uh, there was a logic put into the structural the structure put into the roads in Arizona. They're, they're laid out in a grid of one mile blocks. So, and the traffic lights, most, most of the streets, surface streets are 45 miles an hour and the traffic lights are set up 40, at, at a mile a piece. They're just like, there's not a traffic light for a mile. And the roads are in good shape. They're well thought out. And the other nice thing about Arizona is there was no way to make left-hand turns. They had designed it so if you wanted to make a left-hand turn, you have to go down the street and do a U-turn. They allowed U-turns there. Or you'd have to turn around and, you know, turn around and go back the other way. Here in Cleveland, there's traffic lights literally every 200 feet. But every 200 feet, there's a traffic light or a stop sign. And you can turn left. They've got left-hand, left turn lanes and stuff. So people are getting in accidents all the time because they're, they're too dumb to, to... The people here are tentative drivers. They're scared and tentative. So they don't know what to do. And they're like, what do I do? I gotta make a left hand turn. Oh my God, it's so scary. But yeah, Phoenix has some uh, good things. I mean, the people there, I could live without the people in Phoenix and I could live without the traffic. Um. But for the most part, you know, Ohio is, is and, and Cleveland is, is an old Midwestern town with old mis, mid, Midwestern values. And uh, another thing I miss about Phoenix is um, the people there 
weren't racist. I mean, I really, you didn't hear people throwing the N-word around like you do here. You didn't hear people complaining about the illegals. There was no complaints about the illegals out there because they were doing everybody's yard work. They were doing all the work in the fast food establishments and stuff. I, I honestly, um, I miss the illegals. I miss the Hispanic people. What a nice culture, bright. These were friendly people. Uh, I never had any problems with the Hispanic people. Um, they were doing all the work. They did all the work in the Wendy's and the fast food places we used to go to out there. And uh, I always give this story where we used to go to this, we used to frequent a Wendy's down the street from us. And it was always run by Hispanics and we always joked that they were illegal. So uh, one day Sheriff Joe Arpaio raided this Wendy's and he took all the uh, illegals out. And the service went, went right down, right down the hill because they replaced all the illegals with white kids, white little teenager boys and girls that didn't want to be working. But before then, it was all Hispanic kids and, and grown people, grown up, grown people, you know, adults, grown people. They growed up fast. Adults. And uh, you get served with a smile. They didn't speak the English too good, but they did their work. They got you in on a line in five minutes. The minute they replaced everything with the, with the white boys, with the whitey, you'd, you'd be standing in line for half an hour. It's awful. It's terrible. So, I also miss the fact that people got along out there. I mean, you know, there were fights and shootings and stuff because there's five million people who live out in that area. But for the most part, we all lived in the same neighborhoods. I mean, there were there were all kinds of people in my neighborhood. I mean, there were white people, Hispanic, black, Asian. There were no problems in the neighborhood, like as far as like race relations. Here, there's there's constant stress between the black and the white people. I think one of the other things I really miss is that it was a modern city with modern technology. You could get fiber, fiber optics to your door out there. You can't do that here. Everything's based on copper here. There's copper lines everywhere, and they'd have to they'd have to rewire the entire infrastructure to get people to have fiber to the door. You can probably get fiber to the node. I think they call it fiber up to the corner. And then from the corner, it's copper. So you get you get fiber speeds up to a certain point, but it, it once it hits the copper, it all slows down. It was just a modern city with a modern attitude. And um, oh, oh, the last thing, this is the the last thing: sports. Phoenix had um, in 2002, I think it was, 2001. Phoenix won the World Series. In 2010, they went to the Super Bowl with the Cardinals, and they lost. And I'm telling you, this is a city where they lost the Super Bowl, and they talked about it for a couple of days, and then it was forgotten. Not another word mentioned about it. I listen to the sports station out there all the time, and they weren't constantly whining that Kurt Warner... Uh, blew it or whatever we need a new quarterback all that stuff there was no talk about boy we haven't been in the world series since 2002 or we haven't won it in uh 10 years it was just you know there was none of this hypersensitivity about the sports teams there was none of this like oh my god oh my god oh my god our team lost tonight what are we gonna do <clears throat> there was no obsession about the sports like there is here in cleveland my god if, if any of our sports teams, anybody does anything on the basketball, football, or baseball teams, if somebody looks at you cross-eyed, they're convinced on, on the sports talk shows here that that person is the next best thing to Satan, and they crucify him as if he's, he's some horrible person. Out in Arizona, they didn't do that. There was none of this hypersensitivity about sports. This obsession with sports, I can't stand it. It's it's awful here. It's it's almost painful. It is painful. It's painful. If I hear about LeBron James one more time in this town, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I mean I'm so glad he won us a championship, but the sad thing here in Cleveland, this is this is what I'll close with. Here in Cleveland, we won the NBA championship, the first championship in our city since nineteen sixty four. And we had the parade, which was like a week or something after the, the championship. And what do they start talking talking about after the parade is over? Well, can we do it again next year? Oh my God, people. 
LeBron James did something. He came back. He tried his best to make up for his uh, shortcomings from when he, he moved to Miami. He brings us a freaking championship, and all anybody can talk about is can he do it again? Oh, no. This is really the last thing. I've been talking for 60 minutes, but the really last thing is the weather. I don't dislike the weather here at all. I love I'd rather have gray, rainy skies than sunshine all day. Love it. Love the trees. Love the gray skies. Love the rain. Love the cold. Love all of it. Everybody bitches about the weather. Oh, it's going to rain. Oh, it's going to snow. They're never happy. I don't get it. I'm signing off. It's a long one. So give it a thumbs up, the old snooter. Have a good day. Bye.